Hello, everyone, uh, and uh, good morning from Nepal. Okay, so then the <clears throat> That ring the church and Sanima, and also Trisha be Taram, Mutini, Terea, the name, Castle Ali, Sudima, and Jasin Mujutomi Gizabi, Castle Ali, Sudima, the Tigures. And today, again, we continue uh, this series of teachings that we are having on every Sunday, uh, which are an explanation of Gyalse Nyoshul Tokne's 37 practices of the Bodhisattvas. Yeah, the Gyalse Lalin, the Go Mazu is gone, Latin, and Jachi, Chenamba Tamala, Tensuji, Chiggins, the Gulundi, Inji, Miji, Gulundi, Churuchis, Tachina, Chu Tabachina, Sambachina, Tubachina, Karichina, Combachina, Gulundi, Muni, Gachin Beredu, they do the name Gulundi. Yapoji, some stanchy. Then she cheered the Gimze, and I cheered and she shared the name Karichina and the Gimze, the Karir to Karichini Shubi to any Kazing a Gimze, dig it, dig it on the Shuna, and La Payan Karitu, and Arangichi to Shuna Payan Karitu, Gimze Karichin, the Kanjining, and Arangichi to Shubi, Yanang a Gimze, Simje Tamjiki to Shuna, dig it Payan Karitu. And then to a boy, which is some lot on it, the name, Tigger Shubaina, the nature Shuni, Tigger Kimse, Hakoa Latini, and then Tigger Payne, the nature of Jungres. And before we start the explanation of the thirty seven practices today, as before, I would like to remind you to set the correct motivation. Um, generally speaking, whether we are embarking in the study, the contemplation, the accomplishment uh, or meditation on the Dharma, motivation is extremely important. So it's important to think carefully about the reasons why we are now engaging in the explanation and uh, the uh, study of this uh, Dharma text. Uh, what are our reasons for either listening or explaining the Dharma? Uh, what are the benefits of uh, the reasons that we may have? If I listen to the Dharma with this type of motivation, um, then what will the benefits be? Uh, so in that vein, if I listen to the Dharma for the benefit of all such beings, what will be uh, the uh, result? What will be the benefits of having such a motivation? So please think about this carefully, um, because if one does, if one thinks about one's motivation carefully uh, and understands the reasons why one is engaging in the study of the Dharma, um, then that actually has uh, incredible benefit. The ring to Gasalani, Jasin Mojo Tommy Gazebe, Gasalani, so they the name Casabore. Then just soon 
Tomar geva le gidu, bardu geva şun gidu, dene tamar geva ju gidu. De sum gida ne de tambo tomar geva le gidu de la çöpar çöpar da samur dam java şey. De ne son çabar e. De ne bardu geva şun gidu de la de ne mundu la jüksu da. De nguyşi gibi sum gilam. De bas na ne de tanda kapsu baba de. Mondro çöller çok zor. Mondro çöller çok zor değil ha. Yani dünyanın dünyası, dünyanın dünyanın nani da maran zor. Tanda kabz baba çok balı tuk de var. Şengi de baş, tünge şengi de baş. Kazın naba kabzu çöngi pan baş, gayge çöngi pan baş. Da tanda tünge şengi de baş di. And so within this text, the 37 practices of the Bodhisattvas composed by Gelsen Ishul uh, there are three main parts, the virtue in the beginning, the virtue of the introduction, the virtue in the middle, the virtue of the main part of the text, and the virtue in the end, the virtue of the conclusion. Among these three, we have already completed the first, the virtue in the beginning, the virtue of the introduction, which consisted of the homage and the pledge to compose. We are now within the second, the virtue in the middle, the virtue of the main part of the text, which itself has two main parts, uh, the manner of engaging in the preliminary um, practices, the preliminary steps, uh, and the main practice, uh, which is uh, the path of the three types of beings. Um, so we are now on uh, the manner of engaging in the preliminary practices. Um, and these number seven, uh, among these seven preliminary practices, we have now reached the sixth, which is relying on a spiritual friend the conducive condition to practice. Last time we finished on the fifth, which was avoiding uh, negative friends who are an obstructive condition to practice. The Kazan, the DJ, Nabe Kapsudini. Kanda drona duksun pejur sing se jido sunya bo drona ya tini tangi tambo shuna tropo dila tropo kaze ngi ni shayo ba gewi tropo jida migi we tropo ji ta migi we tropo de kaze ngi ni kong duksun bare <hesitation> kaze tropo migi we tropo de nyambo la tropa yina tene tosam kong sum nyamba nyame ya Deni jam ningje yam deni mebat jure yoba de mebat jure jurba cheba ta eni je ge duksum nyumong ba duksum ya ya phel chuki namju ma phel wa je nyunyu yona ya deni ti thopo de nyam bo ji doba ina ko phel chuki ta de ta bo ki thopo di mige be thopo de ti pang go de ta di mige be thopo de pang ni ta ji de ta bo ji ge mige be da tesam komsum la ya jige nyam jurge jam ningje me be jurge jige na ta yang thopo ya ko jite ni tesam komsum ya yarpel yarge jo chuge duksum ya me be ma nyung ru tang cha do ge cha chuge de ni jam ningje ina ya kare ina ya jige ya ko ji jige gompel jo chuge ge ta thopo ji nyam bol tu bhai na Deni di topo di ta kewi topo cha do gres ta di tering kap sopa ba kewi ki ta topo ba ya ham kewi shinyi kap sopa ba teres. So last time uh, regarding the fifth preliminary practice, uh, when I was explaining, I explained there are two types of friends. There are virtuous friends and non-virtuous friends. And as I explained last time, the non-virtuous friend is the one um, with whom, when you spend time with them, uh, your study, contemplation, and meditation 
decreases uh, your loving kindness and compassion disappears even if you had good loving kindness and compassion uh, to begin with when you spend time with them uh, you lose your loving kindness and compassion um, your three poisons the afflictive emotions uh, increase uh, multiply um, and so such a friend uh, with whom spending time uh, together has such an effect, that is what is meant by a non-virtuous friend. That is the type of friend that one should avoid. Uh, one, uh, the non-virtuous friend uh, in whose company our study, contemplation and meditation decreases and our loving kindness and compassion disappears. And so on the other hand, a virtuous friend, the good type of friend, is the one uh, in whose company our study, contemplation, and meditation increases, develops our three poisons, the afflictive emotions decrease, disappear, and our loving kindness and compassion uh, grow and uh, develop well. Uh, that is a virtuous friend. And so this is the part we have arrived at today uh, relying on the virtuous friend, or one could say the spiritual friend. The Ditawa di Gansik ten and Yepa said your ching, Yune Yarmun, Dada repel your way, Shinye Damba Rangi Lube young, Jeber Zimba Jasel Ali is the Tawa di Tiridal. And so the root verse for that reads as follows. The practice of all the bodhisattvas is to cherish spiritual friends by regarding them as even more precious than one's own body, since they are the ones who will help to rid us of all our faults and make our virtues grow ever greater, just like the waxing moon. Dadambo Naranzo Chigulama de Givishini de Sede Tila Chigiwa de Vijichena the Tambo de Naranzo suit and I am me Yaboji Tobo Tambo Tobo to shed our Jish and Degores Tambo de Tambo de Tobo to shed our Jish Archie. Naranzo Tendrigladin <laughs> Tinity Namju Toba Shira Jig Chido Meba Yana Toba China and Jig Toba Chiela Barji Chung Deva Jena Kazi Oh the Ni Toba Jig Nidi Nyam do Dodana the Ni Toba Yan Jig Chini Drogin. And Tobaya, she did do, she Tobaya gone to Yardo to be Sheravanti, the Cheru Cheru Yard gone to go on the Pelduke. 
Tenin, the Nick, Allega, Legally, Ya Mangu 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 Shadu, the Nick, somebody share away and the Nick Chigi, Yarke, Cheru, Cheru, Dodigi. The Nihang Gombe share away and the Nick Combachi to the Yamachina and the Yamling and Angi Gula Topa, and Yam the Topa and the Nick Kondo Ya Petron. The day Chigi to me, she she knew several at the Nick Tobu Am and Nick again. The day the Chai on a the Nick Dita. Yahbuji think tendi a ten a degree as in Tanda Cups of the Ganga do Ganshi ten and never say your shins in a dead double Gansaji and tena. Then he dig never tamjipa say to grace, cook his saber chicken as So first, when we speak of relying on a guru or a spiritual friend, uh, it's uh, good to understand uh, what is meant by that. Uh, first of all, um, one should really rely on uh, the spiritual guide uh, as a friend in the beginning seeing them as a friend, perceiving them as a friend. And so spending time with them. Um, and uh, as one spends time together, then uh, one becomes close friends with them. Because that's actually what the uh, Tibetan word here for uh, spiritual guide, one could say. The Tibetan word is really um, a virtuous close friend. So uh, first we should regard them as a friend uh, and then become close uh, in the sense that uh, we can have love and trust for them. Um, so at first, this virtuous friend one relies on as a friend, one spends time with them, uh, when talks to them about uh, everything, um, that goes on, one uh, remains with them. And then as time goes on, seeing how they act, seeing uh, how they go about uh, their lives, seeing how they speak, seeing what their qualities are. Um, if those agree well uh, with uh, our own minds, then we become closer to them. Uh, and in that way, slowly their qualities will benefit us as well so that uh, our own three poisons, the afflictive emotions will be reduced. Um, and for example, uh, our uh, knowledge of, uh, comes from studying, uh, our practice of studying. If before we uh, hadn't uh, studied much, we hadn't heard the Dharma much, or perhaps had obstacles to studying the Dharma, <laughs> As we spend time with them, they will uh, help us in um, the study of the Dharma so that uh, our uh, understanding can increase. And slowly based on uh, the understanding that we gain from studying, then the knowledge that comes from contemplation will likewise develop and uh, based on that, based on the knowledge of contemplation, then the wisdom of meditation uh, also develops so that um, we are able to practice and our practice ultimately brings realization. Um, so this is the type of uh, close spiritual friend that one is speaking of here or spiritual teacher um, if one has such a spiritual friend, then it is good to rely on them, is what the text is saying here. Because when we do rely on them, as the text says, they are the ones who will help to rid us of all our faults. The <coughs> Yana, Chigoma Hamagogi, Chigi Yunde, Ina, and the Nidig again Yam to Droba Ina, the Niji Hakogi, Hakoa Sugatan, the Ni Hakoa Yuba Ina, and the Ni 
कौंड मार्फेल भाई ना केगें दे जंबो दो भाई ना कौंड फेल चुके थे ने रंग जो लुंगा ये सुन ला यो बिगे थे ने लुगी मिगे वाले नागे मिगे वाले अने ये के मिगे वा इना रे दिके चलाम खरी ये बाई इना या ते धंजो ते तेला ते ने थे ने न्येपा मंगबो जिसे भी है तिब्बत मंगबो जिसे यंग दो थे ने धंजो न्येपा थाम जे या थे ने जी न्यूं दो पसे याना मैं बस सोच चुके हैं याना न्यूं दो सोच चुके हैं आह याना दी न्येपा दी न्येपा यिं बाला हाँ को हाँ को चुके हैं थे ने तबु की अने कहाँ सो करे शिंगे हम याना गिगे याना चोपो थे जी ตาเอ่อคังซาจิงานังโซเอ่อเต็มไปยินะทีนี้ยินเดียอย่างทีนี้มานังโซจิเอ่อจิเอ่อตันดาเอ่อตาวะยารโมเซวาซุนนี่อ
Givishinya Tenge Kyun Sun and so the text also says one should regard such a sublime <clears throat> spiritual friend as even more precious than one's own body. And uh, when uh, one says a sublime spiritual friend. Uh, this is an important word, which is actually in the Tibetan, but not in the English translation we have here. But uh, this uh, sublime spiritual friend, um, that's quite an important word that points to a number of qualities. Uh, one could say three main qualities. Um, some texts may speak of six qualities or 10 qualities. Uh, or many more qualities, really, depending on the text that one looks at. There are many different explanations of the qualities of such a sublime spiritual friend. However, they can be subsumed into uh, three main qualities, or perhaps two main qualities. So a sublime spiritual friend uh, is one who has both uh, wisdom and accomplishment. Uh, one who, who knows both uh, scripture and has realization, one who is at once a scholar, a, um, a uh, disciplined person uh, and a good-hearted person. Uh, one could also say that it's someone who cherishes good qualities much more than faults, one who cherishes others more than themselves, uh, and one who puts more importance on future lives than on this life. Um, of course, someone who cherishes themselves more than they cherish others cannot be a good spiritual guide. Um, likewise, someone who puts more importance on this life than on future lives will be uh, consumed by the eight worldly concerns and so cannot practice authentic dharma. Of course, someone who uh, is more uh, focused on negative faults than on good qualities can likewise not be a good spiritual guide. So they need to um, put more importance on developing the, their good qualities than their faults. This is what we mean by a sublime spiritual friend, one who has uh, knowledge and practice, one who is at once a scholar, 
uh, trained in the three collections of teachings, a, um, a uh, disciplined person who follows the trainings of discipline and a good hearted person, which means basically having loving kindness and compassion. Such is uh, the spiritual guide, the sublime spiritual friend on whom one should rely. And when one meets with such a spiritual friend, uh, one should, the text says, cherish them uh, and regard by regarding them as even more precious than one's own body. Yeah. And ランランスとレチチチチョデランゲチェプルジェビルディラチェプルジチェムシャゲレアンアルンアンアンサニメギソボセゲレタカシデレジャンチェプルジンバタランゲチョボディケチェムジチギエナタチョボセナランゲウシ
than uh, on our own bodies. Because if we do have such a spiritual guide, if we do have such a virtuous friend that we can cherish even more than our own bodies, we will get rid of all uh, our faults. And that, it is said, is the practice of all bodhisattvas. So that if we ourselves are able to practice it in that way, that will become the practice of bodhisattva. So this was the six preliminary uh, <coughs> step of relying on the spiritual friend who is a conducive condition to practice. And we have now arrived to the seventh and last preliminary practice, which is uh, to uh, take refuge, to rely on the refuge. And so here the text reads, the practice of all the bodhisattvas is to take refuge in the three tools, since they will never fail to provide protection for all who call upon them. For whom are the ordinary gods of this world ever capable of helping, as long as they themselves are trapped within some sorrow's vicious cycle? So refuge, is the, it is said, is the entryway uh, or the gate that leads into the teachings uh, of the Buddha Dharma. That is the number of people Number Chigangasani <laughs> So since uh, most, if not all of you are probably Buddhists, uh, you probably already know of the importance of refuge. Uh, but generally speaking, refuge, uh, it is said, is what differentiates Buddhists from non-Buddhists. So uh, we uh, kind of uh, set the uh, demarcation between Buddhists and non-Buddhists as being whether or not they have taken refuge. Different scholars have different explanations. Sometimes some scholars, uh, being a Buddhist means accepting or agreeing with uh, the four seals of the view. Uh, but generally speaking, we can say that uh, being a Buddhist uh, really comes down to whether uh, one has taken refuge, whether one accepts the three jewels, whether one has faith in, this, in the three jewels. That is what defines uh, a Buddhist. Yeah. <coughs> Sanji 
Da di kunci sumla jabs drogo ve jumsen karir esna. Ji ngaran so da ji barje mambo. Ena jika mambo korwatila. Yana dunga mambo. Jadi nyu mamba mambo. Jadi kici mambo ji. Jadi <hesitation> 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 <hesitation
uh, um, dog. Um, that dog being like uh, all the fear and the suffering and the worries of samsara. Um, because the dog is uh, aggressive, you are afraid of the dog. You don't know how to stop it or how to pacify it. Uh, so all you can do is flee from the dog. Um, you don't know how to protect yourself from it. Who will you go uh, to for protection from such a dog to be liberated from that fear of the mean dog? Uh, only someone who knows how to stop them, someone who knows how to kind of uh, uh, pacify uh, this dog, someone who isn't afraid of the dog. Um, and so in that way, uh, those who uh, know how to pacify the fears of samsara uh, who have no fear of the dangers of samsara. These are the three jewels, our object of refuge. And that is why it's so important to take refuge in the three jewels. Uh, as long as one enters the Buddhist path from the Hinayana, from the lower vehicle onwards, all Buddhists take refuge in this way from the three jewels, uh, in the three jewels. And so it's extremely important to know the reasons why we do so. Uh, but I think most of you all know these reasons, so I don't need to elaborate much more. I just want to point out how important uh, Refuge in the Three Jewels is. Chicago, <laughs> Di Mahimba is a Hindu. Ki ta ham kiana shimbi ki chulu. Chig Tarba da tamji shimbi kuba matoki. Sa da bujina. Kiap kari le chunayam. Deni sa dam do dam. Deni chig shignare kashi deni mila jogin de yore kiap. Deni kashi la. Bena tamba deni gajin. And today, any Mambo, then they get Ravania, drunk chilo tario mari. The Matardu, then Gikina, she dumalepa tario mari. Matardu, the Rangayan Korva lachin sadu cooking and do la tarba the tamji give you go ham, Yana tangi dumal, parche dele, co job to give me. As a lion, the Nyambula pen and a key de la dumale tan and trojuna, Mishimba de key de la cap to women, a coran and yambo trojuri, yambo trojundu, the Ryan Corvus and Latin by yeast. Jigden lay a sweet cap of news, Jigden lay a sweet cap of news, do that Jigden da Jigden lay a sweet cap of news, do Jigden nala two day do, go Jigden is lucky, Jigden be Dunga, go cap to Maran, Corayan, the Corvus and Latin do, go cap to Mares, that the end of the other day, Jigden la, said Dilla. In general, uh, when we speak of an object of refuge, a um, a place of uh, that we go to for protection for refuge. Uh, this is not uh, exclusive to Buddhists uh, in this world. Uh, all of the various religions uh, go for refuge in some way or another, Hindus uh, and uh, other religions. 
each have their own gods uh, to whom they go for refuge. However, as it is said in the text, uh, they themselves are trapped within some sort of vicious cycle. Um, so Buddhists go to refuge in the three jewels uh, because other than the three jewels, all the uh, gods, uh, such as the gods of the Hindus and of the other religions, um, they have uh, not reached the level of liberation and omniscience. So going to refuge, going for refuge in such gods, uh, just as going for refuge in uh, stones, trees, the earth, uh, some people go for refuge in uh, human beings and in actual people, uh, some people go for refuge uh, to various gods such as Indra or Vishnu and so on and so forth. The problem with all of these objects of refuge is that they themselves are stuck within cyclic existence. They themselves are still within the six classes of beings uh, in samsara so that uh, they have not reached liberation from suffering to cyclic existence and are uh, trapped in it uh, like a in a prison or a jail. Um, so they are still being pursued by this mean dog uh, that they fear and that they do not know how to protect themselves from uh, because they have not reached liberation and omniscience. So they do not know how to protect themselves or others from suffering uh, and from obstacles. And just uh, like if I'm afraid of this mean dog that's pursuing me um, and meet someone else who is likewise afraid and doesn't know how to uh, protect themselves from the dog, we'll just both run away together, right? Uh, no one will know how to stop the dog. So in the same way, um, those who are still stuck within samsara uh, are unable to protect us from the sufferings of, of samsara. And this is the case of all the worldly gods. Uh, worldly gods who are still stuck within the prison of cyclic existence uh, do not, cannot uh, afford any protection from suffering. Um, and so generally, uh, we should know that uh, when we speak of gods or deities, um, we speak of two different types of gods. There are worldly gods and uh, world transcendent gods. Mm, Jigdenle <laughs> In the Demba Shiki Nani Lamji Demba. And that dingy touching game. The Tonglamgi Demba was Tongi Kansa, Yana, me, Yana, Ta, Yana, and Kansa were Jamne Karongi, Nina, Pena Demba Shiki Nani. Lamgi Demba Tarching Gage. Anne Lam Aginani Tonglam Mosum to Tongi Kansa in a re, Fly in a re, Yana Sangi, Tati Jap, Madame Jap Josagi, Yuji in a re, Suina, De Dabo Suina, De De. Jigden le debi, flas, a flag that singy am flas, a dinigla cogures, Kazi lamgi demba dam, tonlamgi 
lam nga ginang ni tunglam matongi ang sa am yana hai na di jigale madibi kita sa tukuri tunglam che ni demba si ginang ni kung sa kore lam gi demba ko di matongi di i matongi ang sa dila ni jigdin la madibi sa si sa dila ng so नंबर सांची की कहाँ से बोल रहे क्या जो सर की यू रेवेस नहीं यू मारेस कहाँ से क्या जो सर की यू जी ये नहीं सुनते दिन ये जी जी में जी लाम की देंबा दांग थोंगलाम मुस्लिम थोंगों की कहाँ से जी पुरेस साजम रोज दिन दिन जी शाम की And these types of worldly gods are those uh, mentioned here in the text when it says, whom are the ordinary gods of this world ever capable of helping, right? Um, so the refuge of Buddhists, the three jewels, uh, we could say we can consider them as world transcendent gods, um, whereas uh, the ordinary gods in whom we cannot take refuge are worldly gods. So how does one make the difference? Uh, what is What defines a worldly God or a world transcendent God? When we speak of a world transcendent God, um, what we mean is someone who among the five paths has reached the path of seeing, has perfected the path of seeing, and someone who among the four noble truths has uh, perfectly realized the truth of the path. So this person, whether uh, this individual, whether a, a human being, a God, an object of refuge, um, whoever, that, whoever it is who has uh, reached the path of seeing uh, among the five paths or uh, realized the truth of the path among the four noble truths, that individual, uh, whether a human being, a Buddha, or a God, uh, we can say that they are world transcendent God, but we can uh, call them that way, that they are, uh, in a sense, world transcendent God. That's how we define them. On the other hand, any individual who has not realized the truth of the path among the Four Noble Truths, nor uh, perfected the path of seeing uh, among the Five Paths, uh, is not considered a world transcendent God. Um, so someone who does not, uh, who has not reached these two types of realizations uh, is not a world transcendent God. And such a person cannot be an object of refuge for Buddhists. Um, the correct object of refuge for Buddhists must necessarily have reached the path of seeing among the five paths and perfectly realize the truth of the path uh, among the four noble truths. That is how we make the difference between world transcendent gods and worldly gods. จิตเดลเดบิลลาเซดิซิงยินเดลิจิทังบุกจิตเดลเดมาเดบิลลาเดลาซิงยินเดลิจิมาซังนะจิตเดลเดมาเดบิลลาเรดูสนิจับจูส
ngazo chi di to chi di ngi korwa gi pe shi an ba tu ma gi ran shi par chi gi ran shi ran da chue du gu re da chue ong to tangi mi chap chu mi chi gi ngazo la chop tu gi chi ki di ka tu gi sim tu gi nyu ba yu gi chi to o ta ti la chap chu na ti ni lo wa me wa cha gi re di su re se na kun ju sun to So I think it's uh, important for you to understand in this way how to make the distinction uh, between worldly gods and world transcendent gods. Uh, these are the two defining characteristics that determine whether or not uh, uh, a person individual is a worldly god or a world transcendent god. And those who are not world transcendent cannot be objects of refuge because they are not able to provide us with any protection um, because they themselves have not reached the grounds of realization. They have not directly realized the truth, uh, the path of seeing, uh, and therefore they do not have the ability to protect anyone. Um, who has this ability to protect uh, undeceivingly without a fail? Uh, the three jewels, as the text says, they will never fail to provide protection for all who call upon them. Um, and so in this way, if one goes for refuge in the three jewels, uh, it's as in the analogy that I gave before of uh, the mean dog uh, that represents uh, the uh, sufferings and the obstacles that one faces in samsara. Uh, if I uh, run away from this mean dog, um, but then find someone who knows how to uh, stop the dog, how to uh, uh, pacify the dog, how to um, um, yeah, stop it, uh, then I can, uh, without a doubt, uh, find protection in that person, I can go to them for protection for they will protect me uh, without a fail, uh, just as the three jewels without a fail protect us from the sufferings of samsara. Lam ngagi nani lam di <hesitation> kanso kore <hesitation> lam ngagi nani re omar kohde nda lam di nyi kohde nda lam di nyi di la ani chue konjo se gi res sinyi da wasana arang zu chue konjo se di chik nanda pecha <hesitation> chik tomba duye nda chik <hesitation> Chi kandun chi e da ge jur chi e di chi bul le chiu kun ju se ge o ma re spe je dun e chi bul chiu kun ju se e di <hesitation> ko de nda lam di ni chi ge tok ba nyam da tok ba da ga rang le chiu kun ju se ge o re si. So how then can one describe the qualities of the three jewels briefly? Um, the jewel of the Dharma among the Four Noble Truths corresponds to the truth of cessation and the truth of the path. So the, the Dharma, uh, the jewel of the Dharma, uh, isn't just uh, the texts that you may read or recite, uh, the liturgies that uh, you may be uh, reciting. Um, that's not just what we're talking about when we talk about the jewel of the Dharma. We're not talking just about scripture. But we're also we're actually talking about the truth of cessation and the truth of the path, experience and realization. That the dil chue si gere, di chue karang dil. That the chue dil es chue kunjo si. Kendu kunjo si di rigdul ki rigdul yundi ge tan denge dila kendu kunjo si. That rigdul yundi si tu rig. Jol si tu zeng ni doa, rik si e di, rik bi yin di, tanda kap su baba lam di, jol bi yin di, gok di, di chu di, di rang yin nyam su nyong ki, tan lam di 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 lak len che ni, nyam su nyong ni, tani di kan su kore, <hesitation> di la nyam len che ki, 
Kansa dila teni şu kendi günçü sigir. Tak dita bu kendi günçü di inci inci çaba da anici bu hingoya yomare. Dita jikte garanzo su yina ya. Kazi di kok bitemba da lam gitembe ki nyam da tokba di ci nyamne chike kansa ji yena di tok token ji yena tin dile gende gunjo sen sha chugur so that is the jewel of the dharma uh, as for the jewel of the sangha uh, the sangha consists in those who have uh, awareness and liberation um, and those who hold virtuous qualities so when we speak of awareness and liberation uh, these are two factors, right? Awareness corresponds to the truth of the path and liberation corresponds to the truth of cessation. So basically anyone who has experience of the Dharma, who puts the Dharma into practice and has some uh, experience and realization of the truth of the path and the truth of cessation, uh, that is what we mean by the jewel of Sangha. So Sangha doesn't have to be, they don't have necessarily have to be a monk or nun. Uh, it can be any individual uh, who has, through practice of the Dharma, gained experience and realization of the truth of cessation and the truth of the path. Sangha say, the Sangha Kunjo di, Tanji Gobi Demba da Lamgi, Demba Gi Yundi, Ni. Then ya toro 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 doni. Then he tamalada the she gobs it does any sung sung gay says you don't need teach sung said the gobby in the touching badan gay seduce any lamb gay in the touching gay sung gay sung seduce any that gobs it does any eh pangba. Pang bigi da cik duk bata nyomong bagi caj orang nyomong bata nyomong bithi bata sijer bata cik tawo tawo sama pak sang pak meba sini pang ini gop gopi ini tarjin gie situ zani ini dahmin tu gopi serap segure ini sijer tamji tombani tu gopi serap de tamji ya gie ni Tini lam ye in the tarchin. Tini tamata chik shaja nyomumbata duma tamjilapa dani. Tini sang sang ye siduzani lam da gobi in the tamjipa tarchin badilla sang ye sigiris. That di chur ground the chur dia tarchin in the sangi bugiris. As for the jewel of the Buddha, the jewel, the Buddha is the one who has uh, having further and further developed the qualities of cessation and the qualities of the path has fully perfected them. The one who has fully perfected the qualities of cessation and the qualities of the path is the Buddha. Buddha in Tibetan consists of uh, two words, sang and ge. Sang means uh, purified and ge means developed. What the Buddha has purified uh, is uh, all the elements of the truth of cessation. So purification refers to complete cessation uh, and developed uh, refers to uh, all the qualities of the path that have been perfected. So cessation means the abandonment of all the afflictive emotions, uh, the complete, uh, elimination of both cognitive and emotional obscurations, uh, even their most subtle uh, instances, even the most subtle instances of the cognitive and emotional obscurations have been fully eliminated um, in true cessation. So uh, the uh, Buddha is fully purified in the sense of uh, having reached total abandonment and thereby perfected all the qualities of cessation. The Buddha is also fully developed in the sense of having perfected all the qualities of the path. 
which, me which means the full realization of the wisdom of selflessness of the person and of the emptiness of all objects of uh, cognition, uh, all uh, objects of experience, having uh, fully developed, perfected the qualities of realization, they have, uh, the Buddha has uh, perfected the qualities of the path and in this way achieved liberation from suffering. So uh, that is what we mean by the Buddha. Uh, Buddha is uh, anyone who has uh, fully perfected the qualities of cessation and the qualities of the path, or in other words, uh, fully mastered, uh, fully brought to completion the uh, Dharma. Mm -hmm. That you know, Bogi, Sanjay Chu, Sanjay Kunjo, Chu Kunjo, Kendi Kunjo, did this soon the Latini, Marazo, the Karsigir Sena, the Cap Caps Chona, the Cap Miluva, Sagure, the Nikunjo, Champ Jasal, all easy. Did a Bogi Kunjo Sunday, Marazo, number Sanjay Gay, Cap to Gay, Cap Cabu Chatu Viris. So these three, the jewel of the Buddha, the jewel of the Dharma, and the jewel of the Sangha consists of uh, the three jewels that as Buddhists we take refuge in. And uh, such an object of refuge is an unfailing, undeceiving object of refuge. Therefore, taking refuge in the three jewels is the practice of all the bodhisattvas. Mm. Tangarazo Dunsin Dumba, Mondogi Chedi Tatring, the Tuku Sarki Ures. And so today uh, we finish with this, the seventh among uh, the seven preliminary steps. Uh, and so we finished here the seventh, which was uh, refuge, um, taking refuge. Mm. So we'll stop here and uh, if you have any questions, please post them in the chat. Uh, uh, Jitan le depe laina, any Hindu ki la dapo dapo marepe. Hindu ki la chik varahi yosare, vaja varahi roa, doje pakmo. Rere, ne doje pakmo, jitan le depe la in pe, any Hindu ki la varahi. Dapo Dapo Maripes. Then did it that the Ranas is in money, the number Sanji, Tanda Nazu Dorji, big money, Sina Dorji Pamu di Dilly Debire. Chigdilly Debi Lare, the Hindu crowns if you cab you di Chigdilly Debi, say the Konsaha, go give you money. The Dorji Pamu di Yucha and do you dilla thinking, Gigansa di. Touching Jigdinly Debbie Hako gained the Hamogun in Chebar Mado. It's not from like Cheba Naranzi Nomin Money, but Jigdinly Debbie's hard to study. The Hindu Denzugi touching Dinle, my Davis in the Koranzugi, Jabu Chad Yundu. The Naranzu Money, Jigdinly Debbie's. So the question was Are deities like Vajravarahi world transcendental gods? And is her function the same as the Hindu tantric deity Varahi? Um, it's really a question of uh, whose perception we're speaking of from whose perspective. So Vajra Varahi from the perspective of Buddhists is a world transcendent deity. Uh, however, Hindus, if they take refuge uh, in Varahi, uh, they do not do so uh, thinking of her necessarily or knowing whether or not she is a world transcendent deity or not. Um, so it's not that there's a difference in the object of refuge, the deity itself is the same deity Varahi. However, 
uh, it's from the perspective of the one who takes refuge, whether they are aware uh, of her uh, being a world transcendent deity or not. Are there any other questions? Uh, please post them in the chat if, if so. Okay. Combashuichin, <laughs> Nyamuga, <laughs> So, um, I would also just like to uh, repeat, as I said before, um, that I actually do not have much experience uh, in studying uh, texts in general, uh, and uh, this text in particular. I've uh, not really received uh, extensive teachings on this uh, because I did not uh, finish my uh, monastic education. I, uh, since I was uh, often ill, um, I had to stop in the middle of a monastic university. And uh, so I um, had to leave uh, the Shedra Monastic University halfway. And uh, then I really spent the next seven years uh, teaching uh, the children at the monastery. So I really uh, do not know uh, very much about these texts and I'm not very good at explaining them. Uh, I'm not so eloquent. Um, even though I have recently started uh, explaining uh, some texts to all of you. Um, and uh, so I have a little bit of experience in that regard, but please, if there's anything that is unclear uh, if there's anything that uh, I have not explained well, please um, go and ask uh, Kempos, Lopens, Lamas, uh, who are more knowledgeable than I, uh, who know the texts well, please uh, ask as many questions as possible uh, about any of uh, the doubts uh, or um, lack of clarity that you may have with regard to my own explanations, because I've probably made many mistakes uh, in uh, my explanation. So really, please, please, please uh, go and ask uh, other Kempos and Lopens and Lamas if you have any doubts. I myself have many doubts about what I uh, explained to you. I don't quite know uh, what I'm saying. So I would uh, really like to ask uh, for uh, your uh, forgiveness and apologize uh, for that. Are there any remaining questions? Uh, 
呃,去个中国的,给我信念,去个中国的。呃,去个中国的,给我信念,去个中国的。呃,去个中国的,给我信念,去个中国的。呃,去个中国的,给我信念,去个中国的。呃,去个中国的,给我信念,去个中国的。
doesn't remain a, a sort of an outside uh, superficial dharma, but you really take it in um, and uh, apply it uh, inside, uh, kind of like eating food. So you ingest the dharma in a way uh, so that you may really gain uh, experience and uh, insight uh, from the, your practice of the dharma. If you do so, then uh, that will certainly benefit uh, both your body and your mind um, and uh, help you uh, to be happy. Mm. <laughs> Bondi